The Barbarians at the Gate, the most iconic corporate M&A battles in history is a business book set in the 1980s, written by Brian Burrow and John Hellyar. The book focuses on the takeover of RJR Nabisco, the largest retailer in the United States at the time, and the impact of this takeover on the U.S. business and financial community. First, the book describes the business environment and the competitive situation at the time. In the 1980s, the U.S. economy was undergoing rapid change and competition among businesses was extremely intense. In such an environment, R.J. Arnabisco became one of the largest retailers in the United States at that time. Secondly, the book takes the acquisition war of R.J. Arnabisco as the main line, and describes the process and details of this acquisition war. The takeover battle involved a number of investment banks and private equity firms, including KKR, Kohlberg Kravis Roberts. The takeover battle lasted several months, with many twists and dramatic events, and ended with KKR's overpriced acquisition of R.J. Arnabisco. The book concludes with a look at the impact of the takeover on the U.S. business and financial community. The takeover sparked interest and discussion about private equity firms and led to reforms in corporate governance and investment banking. The first chapter of Barbarians at the Gate, the most iconic corporate M&A battles in history is the prologue, which is a brief introduction to the background of the book and its main characters. In the prologue, authors Brian Burrow and John Hellyar introduce the history and background of R.J. Arnabisco. The company was founded in the late 19th century as a tobacco manufacturer. Over time, the company expanded into a diversified consumer products company that included retail, food, and beverage areas. Prologue then introduces Ross Johnson, CEO of R.J. Arnabisco, a very ambitious businessman who managed R.J. Arnabisco with the goal of turning the company into the largest food and beverage company in the world. His management style and decision-making style were controversial, but also made R.J. Arnabisco one of the most successful companies of its time. Prologue also provides a brief overview of the U.S. business and financial environment in the early 1980s. During this time, the U.S. economy was undergoing rapid change and competition among businesses was fierce. In this environment, R.J. Arnabisco became one of the largest retailers in the United States at the time. Finally, Prologue presents the theme of the book, the R.J. Arnabisco Takeover Battle. It heralded the biggest crisis and turning point in R.J. Arnabisco's history. The takeover battle involved several investment banks and private equity firms, including KKR, Kohlberg Kravis Roberts. The takeover battle lasted several months, with many twists and turns and dramatic events, and ended with KKR's overpriced acquisition of R.J. Arnabisco. Through the prologue, the reader gets to know the background of the story and the main characters, as well as the importance and drama of the takeover battle. It lays the groundwork for the entire book and provides the reader with the necessary contextual information to better understand and appreciate the entire story. The second chapter of Barbarians at the Gate, history's most iconic corporate mergers and acquisitions is The King of Tobacco, which focuses on the founders and original operators of R.J. Arnabisco as well as the history and development of the tobacco industry. The chapter begins with one of the founders of R.J. Arnabisco, James Buchanan Duke, one of the richest men in America in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, who amassed a huge fortune through his tobacco business. In the 1890s, he merged with other tobacco manufacturers to create the American Tobacco Company, which became the world's largest tobacco manufacturer in the early 20th century. Next. The chapter describes the development of the tobacco industry. The history of tobacco in the Americas can be traced back to the ancient Indians, but the real tobacco industry only began to develop in the 17th century. At that time, tobacco began to become part of the American trade and gained great popularity in the European market. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, with the huge profits from the tobacco business, tobacco companies began to emerge and the American Tobacco Company became one of the largest companies in the tobacco industry. The chapter then focuses on the history of R.J. Arnabisco, formerly known as the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, which was founded in 1875 by R.J. Reynolds, a visionary businessman who created many popular brands by improving the quality and packaging of tobacco. 
Reynolds was a visionary businessman who created many popular brands such as Camel, Paul Mall, and Winston by improving the quality and packaging of tobacco. Later, R.J. Arnabisco became successful not only in the tobacco business, but also in other industries such as food and beverages. Finally, the chapter introduces Ross Johnson, CEO of R.J. Arnabisco, a very ambitious businessman whose management style in the early 1980s was controversial. Under his leadership, R.J. Arnabisco achieved rapid growth, but also faced challenges from competitors. Through the chapter The King of Tobacco, readers can learn about the history and development of the tobacco industry, as well as the origins and development of R.J. Arnabisco. This provides the necessary background information for the subsequent chapters, helping the reader to better understand the background and themes of the story. The third chapter of Barbarians at the Gate, history's most iconic corporate M&A scramble is Ross Johnson, Meet the Press, which introduces Ross Johnson, CEO of R.J. Arnabisco, and describes his it introduces Ross Johnson, CEO of R.J. Arnabisco, and describes his role and influence in R.J. Arnabisco. The chapter begins with an overview of Ross Johnson's career at R.J. Arnabisco's predecessor, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. He held various positions in the company, including sales and marketing. In 1985, he was named Chief Executive Officer of R.J. Arnabisco. The section that follows describes Johnson's leadership style and decision-making at R.J. Arnabisco. He is a very ambitious businessman who often takes risky decisions to drive the company's growth. He likes to promote the company's products and brands through large-scale marketing campaigns and advertising. He is also very good at dealing with the media, using them to raise the company's profile and image. The chapter also introduces Johnson's diversification strategy at R.J. Arnabisco. He believes that the company should expand by acquiring other companies in order to achieve greater growth. He expanded the company's business by acquiring other companies, for example, in the food and beverage sector. Finally, the chapter introduces Johnson's personal style and lifestyle. He is a very individualistic person who often switches between work and play. He enjoys high spending activities, such as driving luxury cars and socializing with celebrities. Through the chapter Ross Johnson, Meet the Press, readers can learn about Ross Johnson's role and influence at R.J. Arnabisco, as well as his leadership style and decision-making style. This provides the necessary background information for subsequent chapters to help the reader better understand the main characters and their motivations throughout the story. Chapter 4 of Savages at the Gate, the most iconic corporate M&A battles in history is the first bid, which focuses on R.J. Arnabisco's first takeover attempt and the impact it had on the company and the market. The chapter begins with an introduction to R.J. Arnabisco's shareholder meeting. At the meeting, Ross Johnson announced the company's financial position and future plans, as well as the company's plans to pursue a diversification strategy. He also stated that the company is considering acquiring other companies to expand its business. Next, the chapter describes R.J. Arnabisco's first acquisition attempt. The acquisition attempt was made by an investment bank named Shearson Lehman Hutton, who made an offer of about $2 billion. However, this offer was considered to be too low at the time and was not supported by shareholders. The chapter also describes the impact of the acquisition attempt on the company and the market. At that time, R.J. Arnabisco's share price began to rise as investors began to recognize the value and potential of the company. At the same time, the acquisition attempt attracted the attention of other companies, many of which began to consider acquiring R.J. Arnabisco. This led to a lot of controversy and uncertainty among investors and shareholders. Finally, the chapter describes Ross Johnson's reaction to the acquisition attempt. He felt that the offer was too low and that he was not willing to let the company be acquired by another company. He began to consider other strategies to increase the value of the company and its stock price. Through the chapter The First Bid, the reader can learn about R.J. Arnabisco's first acquisition attempt and the impact it had on the company and the market. This provides the necessary background information for the subsequent chapters to help the reader better understand the development and changes in the story. Chapter 5 of The Savages at the Gate, 
the most iconic corporate M&A scramble in history is the Gang of Four, which introduces four investors, Henry Kravis, George Roberts, Jerome Kohlberg, and Ted Forstmann, and describes their efforts to acquire the company. Forstmann, and describes their investment strategies and interest in R.J. Arnabisco. The chapter begins with an introduction to the partnership between Henry Kravis, George Roberts, and Jerome Kohlberg. They co-founded Kohlberg Kravis Roberts, KKR, a private equity firm specializing in acquisitions and restructuring of companies, in 1976. Their strategy was to obtain high returns by acquiring other companies. Next, the chapter introduces Ted Forstmann, a successful investor and entrepreneur. He is a very talented person who is good at identifying opportunities in the market and achieving high returns through investments and acquisitions. The chapter also describes the interest of these four investors in R.J. Arnabisco. They began considering an acquisition of R.J. Arnabisco and met with the company's executives on several occasions. They concluded that R.J. Arnabisco had high value and potential, and that the company's stock price was relatively low. They planned to achieve a high return through acquisition and restructuring. Finally, the chapter describes the investment strategy and risk control approach of these four investors. Their strategy is to achieve high returns through highly leveraged acquisitions. They make acquisitions by borrowing large amounts of money and pledging the company's assets. This strategy carries a lot of risk, but also has the potential for high returns. Through the chapter The Gang of Four, Readers learn about the backgrounds and investment strategies of four investors, Henry Kravis, George Roberts, Jerome Kohlberg, and Ted Forstmann, and their interest in R.J. Arnabisco. This provides the necessary background information for the subsequent chapters to help the reader better understand the main characters and their motivations throughout the story. Chapter 6 of Barbarians at the Gate, History's Most Iconic Corporate M&A Scramble is the Deal, which focuses on the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition and the role and influence of Kohlberg Kravis Roberts, KKR, and Ted Forstmann. Forstmann's Role and Influence The chapter begins with an introduction to the roles of KKR and Forstmann in the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition process. They met with company executives on several occasions and made a purchase offer of approximately $2.5 billion. This offer was much higher than the previous offer because they thought the company was worth more. KKR and Forstmann planned to make the acquisition by borrowing large amounts of money and pledging the company's assets. This highly leveraged acquisition strategy carries significant risk, but also has the potential for high returns. The chapter also describes the impact of the acquisition on the company and the market. At the time, the acquisition was considered very bold and risky as it was one of the largest leveraged buyout transactions to date. The deal drew a lot of attention from investors and the media, as well as from other companies. Finally, the chapter describes some of the issues and challenges of this acquisition. Many investors and shareholders began to express concern about the deal due to the risks associated with a highly leveraged acquisition strategy. They were concerned that the deal would overburden the company with debt and cause the company's financial condition to deteriorate. Through the chapter The Deal, readers can learn more about the details of the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition and the role and impact of KKR and Forstmann. This provides the necessary background information for the subsequent chapters to help the reader better understand the development and changes in the story. Chapter 7 of Barbarians at the Gate History's most iconic corporate M&A battles is the bidder's edge, which focuses on the interest and actions of other bidders in R.J. Arnabisco and how they participated in the bidding process. The chapter begins by describing the interest of other bidders in R.J. Arnabisco. Many companies began to consider acquiring R.J. Arnabisco because they believed the company had high value and potential. These bidders included Philip Morris, F. Ross Johnson, and Forstmann Little. The chapter then describes how these bidders became involved in the bidding process. They begin meeting with shareholders and executives to understand the status and value of the company. They also begin to consider how to make the acquisition and increase the value of the company. The chapter also describes the strategies and strengths of these bidders. Philip Morris, a tobacco company, plans to expand its business by acquiring R.J. Arnabisco. 
Little, a firm specializing in acquisitions and restructuring of companies, plans to achieve high returns through acquisitions and restructuring. Finally, the chapter describes the competitive and cooperative relationships of these bidders. There is intense competition and tension between them, but also some cooperation and alliances. Through the chapter The Bidder's Edge, readers can learn about the interest and actions of other bidders in RJR Nabisco and how they participated in the bidding process. This provides the necessary background information for subsequent chapters to help the reader better understand the complexity and competition of the story. Chapter 8 of Savages at the Gate, the most iconic corporate M&A battles in history is the Kravis Connection, which focuses on the relationship between Henry Kravis and R.J. Arnabisco, and how Kravis Kravis influenced the company's acquisition process. The chapter begins with an introduction to Henry Kravis' relationship with R.J. Arnabisco, a company in which Kravis had an equity investment in the 1970s and early 1980s, so he had a good understanding of the company's business and situation. He also developed a close relationship with the company's executives. Next, the chapter describes how Kravis influenced the company's acquisition process. Kravis believed that R.J. Arnabisco was worth much more than its current stock price, so he planned to partner with other investors in the acquisition. Together with George Roberts, Jerome Kohlberg, and Ted Forstmann, he made an offer of about $2.5 billion, which was much higher than the other bidders' offers. The chapter also describes the acquisition strategy of Kravis and the other investors. They planned to make the acquisition by borrowing large amounts of money and pledging the company's assets. This highly leveraged acquisition strategy carries significant risk, but also has high return potential. Finally, the chapter describes how Kravis and other investors successfully acquired RJR Nabisco. They met with the company's executives on several occasions and eventually acquired the company for approximately $2.5 billion. The acquisition became one of the largest leveraged buyout deals of its time and had a significant impact on the entire financial community. Through the chapter The Kravis Connection, readers can learn about the relationship between Henry Kravis and R.J. Arnabisco and how Kravis influenced the company's acquisition process. This provides the necessary background information for subsequent chapters to help the reader better understand the development and changes in the story. Chapter 9 of The Barbarians at the Gate, History's Most Iconic Corporate Mergers and Acquisitions is the auction, which focuses on the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition and auction process, as well as the competitive and cooperative relationships between the various bidders. The chapter begins with an introduction to the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition and auction process. During this process, the company's officers and board of directors meet with the various bidders and evaluate their offers and plans. The process is complex because it involves multiple bidders and a large amount of money. The section then describes the competitive and cooperative relationships among the bidders. In this process, there is intense competition among the bidders as they try to gain the company's support and make higher offers. At the same time, however, there are also cooperative and alliance relationships in which they try to join with other bidders to increase their offers and share the risk. Philip Morris planned to expand his business by acquiring R.J. Arnabisco, and offered more than the other bidders in the auction process. Other bidders also presented their plans and strategies. Finally, the chapter presents the results of the auction. After several rounds of bidding, KKR, the investment firm of Kravis and Roberts, eventually acquired R.J. Arnabisco for approximately $32 billion. This acquisition became one of the largest in history and had a significant impact on the financial world. Through the chapter The Auction, readers can learn about the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition and auction process, as well as the competition and cooperation between the various bidders. This provides the necessary background information for the climax and conclusion of the story, helping the reader to better understand the importance and impact of the acquisition. Chapter 10 of Barbarians at the Gate the most iconic corporate M&A battles in history is the death of a director, which focuses on the sudden death of Malcolm Candlish, a member of R.J. Arnabisco's board of directors, and his impact on the company's acquisition. It focuses on the sudden death of Malcolm Candlish, a member of R.J. Arnabisco's board of directors, and his impact on the company's acquisition transaction. 
The chapter begins with the death of Malcolm Candlish, a member of R.J. Arnabisco's board of directors who played an important role in the company's acquisition transactions. His sudden death had a definite impact on the entire transaction. Candlish was one of the company's financial advisors, and he helped the company evaluate the offers and plans of the various bidders and made his own recommendations. His in-depth knowledge and analysis of the company's financial situation and the bidders' plans made his advice and recommendations very valuable. The chapter also describes the impact of Candlish's death on the company's acquisition transactions, which resulted in the loss of a key member of the company's board of directors and made it more difficult for the company to evaluate bidders' offers and plans. This also had an impact on other bidders, who also needed to re-evaluate their offers and plans in order to adapt to the new market and competitive environment. Finally, the chapter describes the progress and results of the acquisition transaction. Despite the impact of Candlish's death on the company and the bidders, KKR was ultimately successful in its acquisition of RJ Arnabisco. The acquisition became one of the largest acquisitions in history and had a significant impact on the financial community. Through the chapter, The Death of a Director, readers can learn about the impact of Malcolm Candlish's death on the RJ Arnabisco acquisition and the final outcome of the deal. This provides the necessary background information to conclude and conclude the story, helping the reader to better understand the importance and impact of the acquisition. Chapter 11 of Barbarians at the Gate the most iconic corporate M&A battles in history is The Final Days, which focuses on the final stages and outcome of the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition. The chapter begins with an introduction to the roles of the company's officers and board members in the acquisition transaction. They play an important role in the acquisition process, helping the company evaluate the offers and plans of the various bidders and ultimately deciding the fate of the company. Next. The chapter describes the competitive and cooperative relationships among the bidders. At this stage, the competition among the bidders becomes more intense because they know that this is their last chance and they must do everything they can to win. At the same time, they also have cooperative and alliance relationships, trying to combine other bidders to improve their offers and share the risk. The chapter also describes the final outcome of the acquisition. In the end, KKR acquired RJ Arnabisco at $109 per share, for a total value of approximately $25 billion. This acquisition became one of the largest in history at the time and had a significant impact on the financial world. Finally, the chapter describes the impact and consequences of this acquisition. The acquisition had a significant impact not only on RJ Arnabisco and the bidders, but also on the entire financial and business community. It sparked controversy over takeover transactions and leveraged buyouts, as well as discussions about corporate governance and board responsibilities. Through the chapter The Final Days, readers will learn about the final stages and results of the RJ Arnabisco acquisition, and the impact and consequences of the acquisition on the financial and business communities as a whole. This provides the necessary background information to conclude and conclude the story helping the reader to better understand the importance and impact of the acquisition. Chapter 12 of Barbarians at the Gate, the most iconic corporate M&A battles in history is the battle for the board, which focuses on the battle for the board of directors following the RJ Arnabisco acquisition. The chapter begins by describing how KKR took control of RJ Arnabisco's board of directors and appointed its own representatives after the acquisition was completed. This sparked discontent and protests from other investors and board members who felt that KKR's representatives did not have sufficient experience and ability to lead the company. The chapter then describes how the battle for the board of directors unfolded. Other investors and board members attempted to vote and litigate for control of the board in order to prevent KKR's representatives from remaining in control of the company. The battle for board control was hotly debated and negotiated between the two parties. The chapter also describes the positions and opinions of various investors and board members. Some investors and board members supported the KKR representatives, believing that they were capable of leading the company and maximizing the company's benefits. However, some investors and board members oppose KKR's representatives, saying that they are short-term speculators who will not help the company in the long run. Finally, 
the chapter describes the outcome of the battle for the board of directors. In the end, KKR's representatives succeeded in maintaining control of the board, and the other investors and board members had to accept the outcome. This marked the end of the acquisition of RJR Nabisco and the beginning of a new phase for the company. Through the chapter, The Battle for the Board, readers can learn about the battle for the board of directors after the RJR Nabisco acquisition. This battle reflected the different views and positions of different investors and board members regarding corporate governance and leadership. Ultimately, KKR's representatives succeeded in retaining control of the board, which provides the necessary background information to conclude and conclude the story, helping the reader to better understand the importance and impact of the acquisition. Chapter 13 of The Barbarians at the Gate, History's Most Iconic Corporate Mergers and Acquisitions is the Kravis Victory which focuses on KKR co-founder Henry Kravis' role in the RJR Nabisco acquisition. It focuses on KKR co-founder Henry Kravis' victory and impact in the RJR Nabisco acquisition. The chapter begins with an introduction to Kravis' background and the history of KKR. Kravis is an experienced and insightful investor who, along with the other founders of KKR, founded a successful private equity firm focused on acquiring and restructuring businesses. The chapter then describes Kravitz's role and contribution to the RJR Nabisco acquisition transaction. As one of the key drivers and orchestrators of the acquisition, Kravitz was instrumental in helping KKR gain control of RJR Nabisco throughout the transaction. The chapter also introduces Kravitz's strategy and methodology. Kravitz employed a unique set of strategies and methodologies in the acquisition, including high leverage and innovative financing models as well as strong management and leadership skills. These strategies and methodologies helped Kravis and KKR successfully complete the transaction and become one of the leading figures in the private equity industry. Finally, the chapter describes Kravitz's influence and stature. Kravitz's success and influence is evident not only in the RJR Nabisco acquisition, but also in his leadership and influence in the private equity industry. His success and experience has had a profound impact on the entire financial and business community and has served as a benchmark and role model for the private equity industry since then. Through the chapter The Kravis Victory, readers can learn about KKR co-founder Henry Kravis' triumphs and influence in the RJR Nabisco acquisition. Kravis's success and experience had a significant impact not only on the acquisition, but also on the private equity industry and the business community. It also provides the necessary background information to conclude and conclude the story, helping the reader to better understand the importance and impact of the acquisition. Chapter 14 of Barbarians at the Gate, History's Most Iconic Corporate Mergers and Acquisitions is an epilogue that concludes and concludes the story, providing the reader with some final explanations and reflections. The chapter begins with the final outcome of the RJR Nabisco acquisition. Despite the widespread attention and controversy surrounding the deal, the end result was a successful acquisition, with KKR successfully gaining control of RJR Nabisco and eventually spinning it off into a separate company. The chapter then describes the impact of the acquisition on RJR Nabisco and the industry as a whole. The impact of the acquisition on RJR Nabisco was far-reaching changing the structure and culture of the company and resulting in the departure of many employees and management. At the same time, the acquisition has generated industry-wide attention and reflection, leading to reforms in corporate governance and acquisition transactions. The chapter also describes the impact of the acquisition on individuals. Many of the people in the story have been affected by their involvement in the acquisition, with some achieving success and others losing everything. It also reminds the reader that success and failure are the norm in business and finance, and that people need to learn to face challenges and adversity. Finally, the chapter summarizes the main content and themes of the story. The story revolves around the acquisition of RJR Nabisco and explores many important topics in finance and business, such as corporate governance, acquisition transactions, equity investment, and leadership. At the same time, Many of the characters and events in the story reflect the complexities of human nature and the ruthless competition in the business world. Through the chapter epilogue, readers can gain a more comprehensive and in-depth understanding of the entire story, 
as well as a deeper understanding of some of the important themes and issues in business and finance. At the same time, the chapter also reminds readers to be cautious and rational in business and finance, and to learn to face success and failure, as well as the complexity of human nature and the ruthless competition in the business world. Overall, the book shows the cruelty of business competition and the wisdom of businessmen by describing the R.J. Arnabisco acquisition. It also reveals the impact of the takeover war on the U.S. business and financial world, providing readers with insightful business insights. If you are interested in business history, or want to understand the history and evolution of American business development, then this book is definitely worth reading. It is not only a business book, but also a classic work on business entrepreneurship and business strategy.